So this is our second video today, and, and this is uh, the video in which I talk about a religious tradition. Again, very, very telescoped, circumscribed uh, talk. Uh, often I have 50 minutes to talk about this, or more sometimes a week. I only have a few minutes. Today I want to talk about Shinto, and I'll say a word about that name, Shinto, in just a couple of minutes. But um, in Japan, religion, as in East Asia, is fluidic. Uh, it's pluriform, as in China and in the, and the two Koreas, or traditionally in Korea. We could think of religion in Japan as a kind of fluidic brocade of religious traditions that have developed along each, uh, alongside of each other for upwards of 2,000 years now. Uh, one scholar, uh, Byron Earhart, referred to this, what I refer to the, bro the fluidic brocade of religious traditions as many traditions within one sacred way. And, of course, we, we can see that this is similar to the way a, a religious life has developed in other East Asian societies. Um, and this, this fluidic brocade is linked also to another characteristic of religion in East Asia, and that is, it, that is its pragmatic focus. Uh, it, as one uh, scholar notes, it matters very little to the average person in Japan whether a particular shrine is devoted to a Buddha or to a Kami. Uh, what matters is whether the prayers work or not. And this, uh, this attitude is summed up in a traditional saying familiar in Japan that uh, of turning to the gods in time of trouble, turning to the gods in time of trouble. This, of course, is a very practical approach uh, uh, to, uh, to religion, uh, and yet, of course, we know that it's very much a part of human uh, religious consciousness globally, that even people who may not be very overtly very pious may find themselves drawn towards some kind of religious practice when times become difficult. It's not to say that uh, there, are, there are no atheists in foxholes, that old expression. There, there certainly are. Uh, but even, even if in a moment of difficulty the most resolute of secularists and atheists were just to say, oh, I, ho I hope if you're in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an emergency room and, you, and the doctor comes out and you just whisper to yourself, oh, I hope, I hope everything's fine. The question of where that hope comes from and to what is it directed, uh, it's a kind of a basic human impulse and, and perhaps it's better to look at it within a larger religious framework to see that yearning for a good outcome as part of the basic religious stance of life, which assures us that, in fact, our lives fit into a larger uh, framework. So uh, that's, a, that's a kind of a background, and it gives, a, I think, a deeper justification for the idea of turning to the gods in time of trouble. Well, of course, gods is an English word, and that's not the word that's used in Japanese. The word that's used in Japanese is kami. K-A-M-I, and that's a singular and a plural term, and it can be referred as spirits or gods or deities or divinities, and, and it refers really to, uh, to extraordinary uh, uh, elders or ancestors, people who have passed on before us. It refers to remarkable characteristics of nature, as perhaps in a, in, 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 in a mountain or in an earthquake or in the, uh, in the, in, in, in the sunshine. It also refers to, uh, to spiritual uh, entities as well, spirits uh, that one might uh, pray to for various kinds of help. And there are numerous rituals in Shinto that uh, can help one to interact with the kami. Um, so uh, kami uh, are at the very heart of Japanese religion. This is the center of what is uh, commonly known as Shinto. Uh, and, uh, and the word Shinto, actually, is it's not uh, originally a, a Japanese word. It, it's derived from Chinese, and it was a way of referring uh, to the indigenous religion of the people of Japan when the Buddhist missionaries began to come onto the scene. And a, a kind of a distinction was made between what they, the Buddhas, and the local spirits, or the kami. Now, it's customary to refer to, to this religious tradition, this indigenous religious tradition of Japan, as Shinto, but in fact, scholars today contest that notion, and uh, they note that much of what is thought of as Shinto is a kind of a, a reification, a hardening of what is really a fluidic religious situation in which Buddhas and the local uh, indigenous spirits, the kami, have 
have worked together with each other over the, over the centuries to help create a common religious consciousness, this fluidic brocade that I was speaking about up front. And so, uh, contemporary scholars uh, today uh, tend to, ref to, dis dis uh, to not use the word Shinto, except in very limited historical contexts. And what they prefer instead, generally speaking, there's always controversies, is to refer to Shinto, wor excuse me, Kami worship, the worship of the Kami. Kami worship is the indigenous religion of Japan. It's the soul of Japanese religion. Uh, there's a Japanese expression for this, kami no michi, which means the way of the kami. So we can also uh, bring that uh, into play as well. And uh, so instead of this word Shinto, um, it's better to use uh, phrases like uh, Kami worship, or that's, in, that's of course half English, half Japanese, or kami no michi the way of the kami. Uh, another expression is kanagara, which means the way of natural harmony or harmony with the kami. And uh, this traditional religion of India is an indigenous religious practice. And if, you're, if we're familiar at all with rel indigenous religious practices, we know that these are traditions that are very rich in ritual practices that sanctify the ordinary aspects of everyday life. There's not necessarily anything supremely transcendent about religion such as this. They're not so much focused on a kind of highly developed and articulated afterlife or heavenly realms. Uh, the thing, uh, what's well, interesting about, uh, about Shinto is that it's a, a pluralistic religious philosophy. There isn't one kami at the center of things, but it's, a, it's an interactive network of spiritual powers and forces, uh, some of which are greater than others, some of which are, are, are associated with this place in Japan rather than that place, local kami. And it's this loosely inter interconnected network of spiritual realities, a kind of brocade of pluralistic and interacting forces that makes up the cosmology of Shinto. And so um, the Shinto, uh, uh, or of the way of, excuse me, it's, these are hard habits to break, simply referring to this religious tradition as Shinto. Um, and so unlike religions of the book, uh, Shinto is not really focused on, on, on a scripture, although there are, of course, uh, books associated with uh, the way of the kami, such as the Nihon Shoki and the Kojiki. Um, but more, more central than scriptures are, are the kami themselves. And uh, I'd like to just mention a couple of uh, well-known uh, kami, uh, uh, and some of these kami include uh, Inari, uh, Inari is the most widely venerated kami in, in the indigenous religion of kami worship. Um, she's a, 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 the deity of the rice harvest, so she's associated with harvesting rice. Of course, that, that brings us back to a very traditional Japan, but she's also the kami of business, of business dealings and interactions. Uh, there is another, there are many kami. I'm only mentioning a few very prominent kami. Um, uh, uh, there is Benton or Benzaiten, uh, uh, a patroness and guard, guardian of the arts, and some trace uh, Benton to Saraswati, the 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 the, the Indian uh, goddess of learning. And one thing we have to keep in mind is that because of the interaction of, of traditional kami worship with Buddhism, which is a religious tradition that ultimately comes from India. Uh, many of the kami are actually, some of the kami are actually from India, if you will. They're deities and saints who have been transported uh, via China to Japan with the result that this brocade of religious traditions is really fluidic because it brings together Indic, uh, Indic, uh, uh, Indic deities uh, uh, via China along with traditional uh, kami as well. Um, something like the way in which, in, in say, the southwest of the United States, uh, the, old, uh, the old deities of the, of the Hopi people, for instance, the Kachinas, uh, became blended in various ways with Catholic saints, a process today in which those linkages are being actually kind of broken. Uh, another and probably one of the most well-known of, uh, of the kami is Amaterasu, the sun goddess. Um, and so um, 
that's just the briefest of introductions to this great religious tradition. It's an indigenous religion. It's mostly for Japanese people. Uh, and yet, if you're in Japan, you can certainly visit a kami shrine. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, but the important point to keep in mind is that as an indigenous religion of Japan, it is able to bring together the many different religious uh, streams of life that have been part of Japanese culture for the last uh, 2,000 years.